Hello everybody and welcome to another video here on the 2019 Kaplan GED. Um, we are doing the 2019 but throughout the years they're kind of basically teach pretty much the same stuff so this is applicable to later years to come as well just if you want to actually follow along with your book then it will need to be the 219 or you can see the info that I have here on the page so we're gonna go ahead and get started Let me zoom that in nope. Don't want that. hello not sure why it's bringing that up let's see okay so let's start number 15 oh yeah this is just to let you know continuation of decimal and fractions practice questions okay so that's why we're starting on 15 here because we're kind of in the middle of that this will be the second to last lesson on that um, so number 15 Jim and Carl have until 1 p.m. to load 250 boxes by 12.30 p.m., 175 of the boxes are loaded. What fraction of the boxes has not been loaded? So let's do this here. Um, so the fraction that we have right here is 175 has been loaded so far. And we know that the total is... 215 okay so let's reduce this fraction we already have that fraction here um, we actually anyways no let me just continue so let's find the biggest um, common denominator or biggest number that will divide into that's I misspoke by saying common denominator the largest number that will go into both of these evenly okay well looking at it we know 100 can't go into both of them evenly we know 50 can't because this is 25 increments but we know 25 can because if you count by 50 by 25 is 25 50 75 100 so this is 50 this is 75 so we know that they're both going to uh, 75 okay uh, into 25 or vice versa Let's see, so, well, I'm not even going to do that. So 25 goes into 175 times. It goes in there seven times, okay? And how you can verify that seven times uh, 25 will equal 175. And then, um... 25 goes into 250. No, it goes into 104 times. So there's 200. So 8 plus 2 more times is 10. So this is the total amount that they have loaded up. 50, uh, 10 being the amount equal to the amount that they need to load up. And 7 being equal to the amount that they have loaded up so far okay so we do know that the question is what fraction of the boxes has not been loaded so we know if 10 is the amount that is supposed to be loaded up okay because 10 is equal in this case to 250 so we have 250 over 250 and we need to minus the amount that has been loaded up, which is one the 7, which is represents 175. So 10 minus 7 is 3. And then just bring down the 10. So 3 tenths is the amount that has not been loaded up yet. Okay. Here you go. B is your answer. Okay, number 16, on the number line below, what is the value of A minus B? Okay, so 
value of A minus B. Let's try and figure this bad boy out. Um, so we know that they're counting by eighths. You can see here, okay, one eighth, three eighths, five eighths. So one fourth is equal to two eighths, okay? Um, it's just reduced. They reduced the fractions when they came. Same here. This would be equal. One half here is equal to um, four eighths. So that's how we know that they're counting eighths. Or you could really just count all the way here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you know, since there's eight, they're counting by eighths. Okay, so what we need to do on the number line below, what is the value of A minus B? So the simplest way really to do this is, since we know that they're using, they're counting in eighths, we put eight here, then just count like this. Um, the vet for, so from B to A, how many is that? It's one, two, three, four, five. So it would be five eighths, and that would be your answer. Um, another way to do that would be, since they have actually, since you can see the stated amounts here, so remember to find the difference, you always want to subtract. Seven eighths minus one fourth, but remember with a subtraction the denominators have to be the same. So we know that one fourth is equal to two eighths. Okay, so we can put just put two eighths here, or you could do you know, put one fourth, and then okay, find the common denominator that way. How many times? We know that the largest number that goes into, well, first of all, ask yourself if the lower number goes into the higher number, and in this case it does. And it goes in there twice. So we'll do 2 times 4 is 8. But then we also have to multiply this one to keep the same proportion. So we multiply it by the same amount that we multiplied the 4 by. Okay? So your new problem is 7 over uh, 8 minus 2 over 8. So 7 minus 2 is 5 over 8. Okay. So either way, look at it. B is your answer. This way was certainly the easier way to do it. But if you want to know how to work out the problem, that way is how you work it out. Okay, clear canvas. Now we are on number 17. So Scott is driving about 380 miles from Los Angeles to San Francisco. He plans to cover three-fourths of the distance before noon. How many miles does he plan to drive before noon? Okay, so think of this 380 here is the equivalent of the total trip so it's the equivalent of the four right here this four represents 380 okay so in this case we want to multiply okay so 380 we need to turn 380 into a fraction so with uh, while keeping it uh, while keeping its 380 value so we put a 1 under here so 380 times 3 fourths and this used to be kind of confusing to me just because I'm like well why would we multiply um you'd think that it would be even a higher number, like 3, because like 3 times 380, whatever that is, 900, uh, 1,000 something, 1,100 something, or, <sighs> I'm not going to do the math at the moment, but um, 
So how would that work? But actually what you're doing, 3 over 4 represents less than 1, so you're not really multiplying it 3 times. You're actually multiplying it 0.75 times, which is even less than 1. Okay? Which this here represents 0.75 is um, 3 fourths, pretty much. Okay? So... We need to multiply that. Actually, what we do is see if we can cancel this first, okay? So we, what I mean by that is, does 4 go into 380? And, you know, you could work this out. Let's see. Actually, you are allowed to use a calculator on this. So let's do this. 380 divided by 4 equals 95 okay so you know that um, you know that 4 goes in 380 95 times so we'll cancel this make it a 1 cancel this make it a 95 so this is basically cutting out the reducing step at the end of the fraction instead of making this a huge number like 380 times 3 1,000, blah, 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 whatever, and then having to reduce it there, this just cuts that way down. Okay, so now we can do the problem, which is multiplication. So, 3 times 95. 3 times 95. I am using a mouse here, so if it's messy, please forgive me. 3 times 5, 15. 3 times 9 is 27, 28, so that's your answer for this one, 285 over 1 times 1, 1 times 1 is 1, okay, so we know anything over 1 maintains the value of the numerator, so 285. So that's your answer, which in number 17 is A. Okay, right here. Um, okay, now number 18. A cookie recipe calls for one and two thirds cup of sugar. If you wanted to make half the quantity shown in the recipe, how many cups of sugar uh, would you use? Let me clear this. Okay, so we have the recipe calls for one and two thirds. Okay. And we want, if you wanted to make half the quantity shown in the recipe, how many cups of sugar would you use? So we need to multiply this, okay? So let's see, times, um, what was it? Half. So we know, yeah, if you, wanted, if you want to make half the quantity shown in the recipe, so we need to do times one half. So basically, again, this is like the previous problem I showed you. Why would we multiply this? Well, the reason is, um, let me sort this out first. Okay, well, one and two thirds here. Okay, you'd think, oh, if you multiplied this, it'd be this would be greater. But you're actually multiplying this by less than one, which is 0.5, which is half. So, um... Let's see, let's cross this out. Well, what we do is 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. So, 5 thirds. Okay. So, 5 times 1 is 5. Let's do this. And 2 times 3 is 6. So, 5 over 6, is that an option? Yes, it is. So you would need five sixths cup of sugar to make half of the recipe, okay? Now let's go to number 19. 
Which of the following shows the drill bits arranged in order from least to greatest in size? Okay, so here's the, um, what do you call it, the little chart. And let's write these down. 9, 16, 5 over 32. Um, 3 over 8 and 1 over 2 so we need to compare these you probably like how the hell do we do this now I'm here to tell you very easily so find a common denominator because you know if these bottom numbers are all the same it's so much easier to tell so we find Okay, let's see if it, if there's a number in here that all of these numbers will go to. Just by looking at it, I can see yes. 32. I know 16 times 2 is 32. 8 times 4 is 32. And 2 times 16 is 32. So we can just use 32. So 16, to get to 32, you need times it by 2. So I'm wondering how if I should write this whole thing out. Not really. Well, okay. I'll do it for the top one here. 16 times 2 equals 32. But then we also need to times the top by 2 to keep the same, the equal proportion. So 2 times 9 is 18. Okay. So then 532, we would keep this the same because it's already 32. We don't need to move it up at all. Then 8 goes into 32 four times. So 8 times 4. It's writing this out so you guys can see it. If you can, do it in your head. So much easier and quicker. So 3 times 4 is 12. And 4 times 8 is 32. Basically, the idea here is however many times you need to times this to get it to 32, do that. Then times this by the same amount that you needed to times the denominator. Okay. And then this one is 2 times what is 32? 16. 1 times uh, 16 as well is 16 over, uh, sorry, over 32, let's about to put a 16 there, 32, okay, so now it's so much easier to compare, basically, whichever number on top is largest, that would mean that that is the bigger number, so it does ask us, which of the following shows the drill bits arranged in order from least to greatest? So we'll start with one. which one has the least value. Um, so this would be number one, which would be the least. Second least would be 12 over 32. So I'll put two here. So third would be this one here, which is 16 over 32. Then fourth would be 18 over 32. Okay, and we know which order this is. Top is cutter. Just going to not write the whole thing out. Cutter. This one will be CB for core box. This one will be classic. That's A, even though it doesn't look like it. This will be bevel, B. So we know number one is cutter box. Um, let's see, so, so pick one that has cutter box. Cutter box there, then and there. Number two is classic. So this one has classic, whereas this has bevel. bevel so we know it's this one here. Okay. So D is the answer there. Okay, we are almost done here.
number 19, which of the following shows the drip? No, we just did that. Joe is going to order a pizza. He will eat at least half of it. If he's very hungry, he might eat as much as seven-eighths of it. Place two points on the number line below to represent the minimum fraction of the pizza Joe might have left over and the maximum fraction of the pizza Joe might have left over. So this is a little bit tricky here, just how they word it. I'll try and figure this out and then see if it's right or wrong. And then ask yourself why it's right or wrong. So the basically the answer to this one is um, one eighth and one half. Okay. Probably by reading this, you would think that it needs to go on one half here, and then by this here, think that it needs to go seven eighths. But actually, what they're asking is. Um, what, let's see, place two points on the number line below to represent the minimum fraction of the pizza Joe might have left over. So they want to know how much he may have left over based on these two numbers. So if he eats, uh, if he's real hungry and eats seven eighths, then he'll have one eighth left over, okay? Um... And if he's not so hungry, and he eats one half, he'll have half left over still. So one eight, the dot will be one eight right there, and on one half right here, okay? Again, let me see that. Fraction of the pizza Joe might have left over, and the maximum fraction. Yeah, so half would be the most he would have left over, because if he... It's not hungry and eats half. There'd be half left over. The minimum left over would be uh, one eighth. Because if he's hungry and he, what do you call it, eats seven eighths, then he would have one eighth left. Okay, now number twenty one. A project should take no more than sixty hours. If John can spare 7.5 hours per day to work on the project. What is the maximum number of days it will take him to finish? So, let's see. Hello. Okay, let me get rid of this. Um... Okay, so you need 60 hours. Okay, basically you need to turn this into a fraction. So 60 hours. Okay, so we need to divide this because, what do you call it? We need to know we can figure out he does 7.5 hours a day and we figure out how many times 7.5 goes into 60 then we will have our answer so here we go we'll have the number of days so 7.5 uh, we need to turn to fraction form which we know that 0.5 is a half if you don't know that you need to study the um, decimal fraction equivalency chart I forget which lesson I had on I think it's lesson 11 but I'm not 100% sure okay so since it's a mixed number we need to change it to a what do you call it improper fraction so 2 times 7 is 14 plus 1 is 15 Okay, let's cross this out since we used it to make this 15. Um, now we need to, let's see, I'm trying to think if I should cancel this right now or after. Okay, so we flip this over, um, make it a 2 over 
15 so for division you always need to invert the right side here and then change this to multiplication once you've inverted okay but before we do that let's try and cancel out okay can't cancel here because this number is 1 so it's already lowest so 15 does 15 go into 60 yes it does we know 2 times 15 is 30 2 times 30 is 60 so it goes in there 4 times so make that a 1 we make this a 4 now we won't have to reduce at the end of the fraction oh I'm making a 40 for some stupid reason So 2 times 4 is 8, and 1 times 1 is 1. Again, anything over 1 keeps the uh, value of the numerator, so your answer is 8 there. Okay, so it will take 8 days working 7.5 hours per day to complete the project, which takes 60 hours. Another way you could do that is we'll write it out is 60 divided by 7.5 you know you can't do it this way I mean technically 7.5 does go into 60 but when you uh, do a division problem like this with a fraction you need to Turn this to a whole number. However many times you need to move the decimal place, you move it here. A lot of dot. And if you do this problem, it will be 8 as well. So, let's see. That's the answer for that. Alright, last one, guys. So, how many miles would a map distance of 5 uh, over 8 inches represent in one inch uh, sorry if one inch equals 240 miles so 240 miles over we need to basically multiply here over one because we need to change 240 into a fraction okay times 5 eighths does 8 go into 240 we're trying to cancel here and by the way it wouldn't just have to be does 8 it could be does 2 we know that 2 goes into both of these so if 8 didn't go into 240 we could also cancel by 2 um, 2 40 Devoided by 8 equals 30. Okay, so yes, 8 goes into 240 30 times. So 30 here, we make this a 1. So 5 times 30, well, 3 times 5 is 15. So we do that, then we just add the 0. 150, 1 times 1 is 1. So your answer equals 1. 150 so if an inch represents uh, 240 miles then 5 eighths of an inch which is right here would represent 150 miles okay um, another way you could kind of set that up is like this 5 eighths then see if any of these well we know that 80 here represents 240 okay and then we would see how many times this is the variable that we need right up here okay so we would see how many times this goes into that into 240 we know it goes in 30 times. Okay, you would do it the same way, 240 divided by 8, like we did in the calculator earlier. We'd find out it's 30 times. So then 
we know that 8 times 30 is 240. We would also have to multiply the top number by 30 as well to keep it in the same proportion. 5 times 30 is 150. Okay, so we know that the 5 here represents the 150. So 150 is your answer. Anyways, thank you guys very much. It was a pleasure. It was an honor. And many other things that I can't think of right now. Um, um, stay tuned for my other videos. And if you did appreciate the help, please give me a like. And if you want to see the other videos as well, subscribe so you can get notified. If you have a friend, tell a friend. That is not just any friend, but a friend who's actually interested in and going through the GED. All right, have a good one.